All right, another important, uh, another important concept when in terms of number theory is the concept of the greatest common divisor. And I'm, well, I'm going to call it the greatest common divisor. There's other names for it, the greatest common factor. Uh, that's uh, another one. The uh, highest common factor, the HCF. Uh, I, I don't know. Factor to me implies that it's less than the number, although that's not a strict definition. So, you know, I like greatest common divisor, but it really they're all synonymous. So, you know, whenever you see GCF or HCF or GCD, they all mean the same thing. So, the, um, as I just said, the symbol that we use for this is GCD. Uh, sometimes you'll see it in capital letters, but most of the time I've seen it in lowercase letters. And the uh, GCD of two numbers, so normally it's two numbers. You can actually have the GCD of three numbers. You'll see that in the worksheet. But in general, GCD is of two numbers. So, you know, if we have the two numbers A and B, we'd write the GCD of A and B. Um, if we had the GCD of five and seven, we'd write that. A definition of the GCD. So the GCD of A and B is uh, first thing we do is we create a set and we create the set of all we'll call it n such that n divides a uh, and we use our symbols from propositional logic uh, and n divides b so we have uh, all the numbers which divide both a and b and then we take the maximum value of that and max is a, a function which just takes the biggest number of the set okay so it's the maximum of all the divisors of both a and b okay uh, that's what the GCD is great so let's do an example let's try and find the uh, GCD of say 45 and uh, 60 okay so one way to do this is to list. Now we're going to come up with lots of really cool ways, not lots, a couple of really cool ways of doing this, but the easiest, I think most straightforward way that makes the most sense is literally just to list the divisors. So let's list the divisors of 45. Uh, so for 45, we've got um, 1 and 45. We've got 2 doesn't go in, 3 does, 3 goes in. 15 times, we've got 5 goes in 9 times, uh, and oops, I left too much space. That's it. There we go. Alright, so those are my divisors of 45, and then for my divisors of 60, I have 1 and 60, and 2 does go in, 2 goes in 30 times, and then 3 goes in 10 times. Um, sorry, 10. 3 goes in 20 times. Uh, 4 goes in 15 times. Uh, 5 goes in 12 times. Now for this one, I did not leave enough space. Uh, tell you what, I'm just going to start over. Uh, and then the last one, 6, goes in 10 times, uh, 12, 15, 20, 30, and 60. Okay, great. <clears throat> um, so those are all the numbers. So we want to look for the greatest common divisor. So, well, the greatest common, the greatest divisor of, uh, we, could take the, we could start with a smaller one and say 45. Does 45 go in here? And the answer is nope. So 45 is out. Uh, how about 15? Does 15 go in? Oh, there's 15. So 15 here and here uh, is a common divisor. And since there's no bigger divisor of 45 that goes in, 15 is the greatest common divisor. So 15 is the greatest common divisor. If we wanted to actually figure out the set, um, it would be the maximum. Uh, let's list all the common divisors. 
maximum, well, one is a common divisor, uh, three is a common divisor, five is a common divisor, uh, and 15. So it's the maximum of that set, and the maximum of that set is 15. All right, so that's how we uh, figure out the greatest common divisor. Um, not, you know, not too difficult. We're going to find some, some ways of, of making this process a little bit easier. But before we do that, let's just talk about just a couple properties uh, that I think are relatively straightforward. So GCD of A and B is equal to the GCD of B and A. That one's pretty obvious. Uh, if it's not obvious to you, then you should try to prove it. And you can prove it based on this definition. Pretty straightforward. Okay, uh, GCD of a number with itself is just the number. And the GCD of a number and 1 is 1. And one last definition, we say that if the GCD of A and B, uh, well, actually we'd say, let's, we're going to write this again because it's an if and only if statement. So if the GCD of A and B is equal to 1, then we say that A and B are relatively prime. Okay, now that doesn't mean that they are prime themselves. What it means is that uh, they have, if you take the prime factors that are common to both of them, there are none. Um, so, yeah, one is the only number, the only factor that is common to both of them. All right, uh, next up is the Euclidean algorithm.